Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And this video is continuing my videos for those of you that are either new to photo editing and just picked up Luminar Neo or new to Luminar Neo and trying to learn the features and how things work. This video is going to be specifically about brush masking and kind of what it is, how it works, how you can use it, that sort of thing. Let's get into it. Um, I've done this in previous videos in the past explaining masking, and this is kind of the best way I can think of to really show what it is. And so this is just a gray piece of paper, basically, but it's going to be a great way to examine what masking is and how it works. So I'm going to go into the Develop tab, and I'm going to just take the exposure, and I'm going to move it to 100, and it turns the whole thing white. So what masking is, brush masking specifically, it's basically painting. Uh, it's called brush masking for a reason. If you want to brush mask something, you just click on this little icon, which is like a spray paint uh, can head kind of icon. It says add mask. I'm gonna click on that, and you've got paint mask. Currently, version 1.0.1, .1, the only option is paint mask. They will be adding additional masks like gradient mask and radial mask, and I believe luminosity masking. I will do videos on those in the future when it's in Neo, but right now, paint mask is all you got. Um, I say brush mask, paint mask, I use those terms interchangeably because you paint with the brush, right? So anyway, you've got a few controls here. You can um, click here to paint and that little eraser icon allows you to erase whatever you've painted. But what it does is allow you to take the edit that you've done and apply it or paint it or brush it specifically into a specific part of the photo. So for example, if I've got this photo, which remember, the photo is actually gray, and I increase the exposure all the way to make it white. And so let's say I only wanted the white to be in certain parts of this photo, right? So that's where brush masking comes in. You've got three controls here. You've got size, which is gonna increase or decrease the size of your brush. You've got softness, which is gonna decrease or increase the, the how hard or soft the edge is. And so the further you go to the right, the softer the edge is. You'll see that they, difference between that inner circle and the outer circle is great, uh, greater. So the more to the right, uh, the higher softness, which means it's more of a smooth edge transition from fully painted to not painted at all. I'll show that in a second. If you go left, uh, eventually those two circles overlap each other and it's a very hard edge, which means it falls off directly from where it's painted to where it's not painted. I'm gonna start with a very soft brush and then strength is basically the intensity. How much of that do you want to be applied? I'm gonna go with 100 there and 100 on softness and I'll just use a size uh, here about in the middle. So again, I have a gray piece of paper. I added, uh, made it all white, but I wanna paint the white into just a certain part. Now I'm just gonna take my mouse, you click it once, and you drag it around the photo, and you can see what it does. I've painted in white to that section. Now, I've got softness as a, at 100, so that means the edge is very smooth. It's a gradual transition from where it's pure white to where it fades back to gray. That's a gradual transition. And strength, I've got 100, which means wherever I'm painting in the center, that center circle, because of the softness, I'm focused on the center circle here. The strength is 100, and if I decrease that, it decreases the opacity. So let me show you an example. If I take the softness all the way to the left and paint, you will see that I now have a very hard edge. Uh, so zero softness is you know, all hardness, whereas um, 100 on softness is what it does up here with that soft edge. So down here, when I was at zero on softness, I have a hard edge, which means it goes from completely white, I've painted in, everything white, and then the gray, that transition zone, is an abrupt drop uh, from white to gray. So I'm not getting that smooth transition zone. So this is something to allow you to control how that is applied to your photo. And these could be edits like adding details or adding a pop of color or adjusting the light, things like that. So that's why it's important to use these tools. And then strength, I will just take, uh, strength is at 100. You just saw that here with softness at zero. If I take strength to, let's say 48, so about in the middle, and I go like that, if you look at it, you can see that it's not all the way white because I've basically got a strength of 48 or opacity is what I think of, which means all the white is not coming through or being painted on, I should say. Um, it's about half white, which is kind of a lighter gray. So that's an opacity, and uh, up here is basically a definition of the softness, and then this is uh, a, a very soft uh, application, I should say. Um, and then if you want to erase, you just click on the erase, and you can just come in and erase, and notice 
That didn't erase at all, and that's because I'm at a strength of 48. So make sure you check your strength and then come back, and you can just erase those things if you want to get rid of them, and all that's gone. I could do the same here. I could just come in and start erase these things and get my gray photo back the way it was. And, of course, you can always just hit reset if you wanted to get rid of it. So that's how masking works, what it is, and what the controls do. And now I want to show you how you can use it on a photo. Okay, I've got this photo here. I'm just going to take Accent AI, and I'll just go to... You know, something like 80. It looks kind of kind of okay, to be honest. Um, I kind of like that. Uh, but maybe I want to go in here and I want to adjust the temperature of the sky and make it a little bit bluer. Or I could come in here, drop the temperature, and maybe not that much. So maybe, you know, like a negative 20. I'm just kind of cooling off the photo. However, that's applying on the whole photo. So this is where I can come in, and I'm going to go strength at 100. Um, I'm going to do softness at 100. I'm going to do size kind of large. And I'm just going to come in and let's just say I'm, I'm going to go over the cross just because I'm being sloppy here. But um, let's just say I want to paint some of that cooler temp into the sky and the sky only. I am just using my brush to do that. Hence, I've got a big brush and I'm not really paying attention to the edges. Although I do recommend you pay closer attention uh, when you're editing your own photos. But for demo purposes, you kind of get it. Let's pretend that's what I uh, wanted to mask specifically. And if I turn this off, you can see the sky is a little bit more gray. And now it's a little bit more blue simply because I adjusted the temperature across the whole image and then painted it in just to the sky. If you ever want to look at your mask, you can click on those three dots. You've got a couple of options here, including show mask. That mask will show you exactly what you wanted to do. So if you wanted to come in and paint a little bit more, you could do that. And if you did something like this and went over that, you might say, oh gosh, I need to come back and erase it. And then you can just see the mask that way and then come back and erase anything that you might have accidentally messed up. But that's how masking works with brush masking or paint masking in Luminar Neo. Very simple, very straightforward, allows you a lot of control and customization over how edits are applied in your images. Hopefully that demo gives you a good idea of how it works. I definitely recommend experimenting with it. It's a very powerful and advanced tool, although it's really not hard to use. It just gives you a lot of control, which is great for when you're editing photos, of course. So hope that helps, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more Luminar Neo videos. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave me a comment down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon, my friends. Take care, and until then, adios.